Hey guys, Charlo Green here. Today I'm talking about a stimulus proposal that would provide every single qualifying American over the age of 16 with a two thousand dollar monthly check for up to 12 months and another proposal that would cancel rent and mortgage payments through the duration of the crisis or for up to an entire year why are they doing this because the cares act was a great initiative it did provide some help for taxpayers and small businesses but as a one-time cash payment we all know it didn't do enough to actually rescue or save any of these businesses in my own business the ten thousand dollar check to cover employees won't even last a month and when you hear the fact that tons of people still haven't received their stimulus checks and that the fund has already been exhausted, the $350 billion set aside to help small businesses, it's great to hear that our representatives are still working hard to find solutions um, that'll really make a positive impact on this crisis. Most recently, members of Congress have made two separate proposals. One that would provide Americans over the age of 16 with a $2,000 monthly check for up to a year, and one that would cancel rent and mortgage payments for up to a year or throughout the COVID crisis. Uh, do me a favor and hit like and subscribe. It'll tell YouTube to show this video to more people. And you and I both know people need some good news and free rent and, and free money is, is definitely good news. And of course, subscribe for personal finance and business videos. Now let's dive in up first, proposal number one, the $2,000 monthly stimulus check. Now this will technically be called the Emergency Money for the People Act. This act would provide additional cash payments to Americans who've been impacted by the pandemic, which is all of us, right? Now, the Emergency Money for the People Act would provide $2,000 monthly payments to every qualifying American over the age of 16. Now, this would include people who were left out of the CARES Act, which includes some high school and college students and adults with disabilities who were ineligible to receive a stimulus check because they were claimed as a dependent on another tax return. And because not everyone has a bank or a home address, the Emergency Money for the People Act calls for individuals to get this money through direct deposit, check, prepaid debit card or mobile money platforms like Venmo, Zelle, or PayPal. Welcome to 2020. So who qualifies for the $2,000 monthly stimulus check? Again, every American over the age of 16 making less than $130,000 annually would receive at least $2,000 a month. Married couples earning less than $260,000 would receive at least $4,000 a month. Qualifying families with children will receive an additional $500 per child for up to three children. Now, those who had no earnings, were unemployed, or are currently unemployed would also be eligible for the stimulus, even if they didn't file a tax return. Now, if you want me to make a video about that, let me know in the comments. I'm trying to keep this short and to the point so you can go ahead and, and know what you need to do to get to your money. Now, those who were not eligible in 2019 or 2018, but would be eligible in 2020, could submit at least two consecutive months of paychecks to verify income eligibility. All right, so those are who qualifies for the first proposal that would give Americans $2,000 per month for up to a year. Now, on to proposal number two, canceling rent and mortgage payments through the coronavirus emergency. Um, so representatives introduced the Rent and Mortgage Cancellation Act. This act, if approved, would call for a nationwide cancellation of rents and home mortgage payments through dur the duration of the pandemic or for up to one year. The bill would include full rent payment forgiveness for your primary residence. That part is important. We're going to circle back to that. Full mortgage payment forgiveness for your primary residence. No accumulation of debt for renters or homeowners. No negative impact on their credit rating or rental history. It would establish a relief fund for landlords and mortgage holders to cover losses. And it would create an optional fund to finance the purchase of private rental properties to increase the availability of affordable housing. 
The bill would also be retroactive to March 13th and would last for one year unless extended, meaning renters and homeowners who made payments during April 2020. So if you if you paid your rent on the first or paid your mortgage on on the first or whatever that was due, you would be reimbursed for those payments, which is kind of cool. Um, the bill would only allow taxpayers to receive coverage for their primary residence. Told you we'd circle back to it, meaning it will not cover your second home, your vacation home or other non-primary residences. Those who have both a mortgage and also a, a home that they're renting would have to choose the home or that other property for which they want to receive the financial relief. So they're not just gonna cover everything. If you have one home, that's what it's gonna go towards or you're gonna have to pick and decide which one you're gonna apply that relief towards. The Department of Housing and Urban Development would create a relief fund for lenders and landlords to cover the lost rental and mortgage payments they would have received. But to receive those funds, lenders and landlords would be required to follow federal guidelines for fair lending and renting practices for five years. Now, these bills are in the early stages and we don't know if either will be made law, but I'd love to hear what you think about each. Welcome to LA, right? Um, is it enough? Do you think $2,000 a month is enough in you not having to pay any rent? Or do you think that's too much? I don't know. Um, a lot of people that after they pay all of their, like no rent, you don't have to pay rent and you're getting this extra, that would actually make an impact. More than $1,200 for you to figure out how to stretch until the end of this crisis. That seems like it would make a way bigger impact. I just don't know how, where that money is gonna come from. I don't know how we're gonna pay for that. I would love to hear from you. Is it enough? Is it too much? Um, hop in the comments, let me know. Also a quick note, watch out for scam calls and text messages about the stimulus. I know that I got one. I know that people are receiving texts and calls saying that their social security number has been canceled or that they need to text back or click this link in order to access their funds or get an update. Um, these government agencies aren't reaching out to individuals on a one-on-one -on -one basis. That just doesn't happen. So if you or if your mom or your grandma is getting a call from from the, the stimulus department of the United States, it's, it's not real. Run the other direction. Better safe than sorry. If you ever have any questions, always go directly to the source. All of these, these governmental agencies, um, the SBA, um, all of these governmental agencies, they all have websites. Um, if you were to Google stimulus relief, they would send the first, like most verified results at the top of that and you would see exactly where you need to go, depending on if you're applying for relief for yourself or for your business. Um, you'll find the right information that you need as long as it's ending in .gov. So look out for that. Like this video so it tells the YouTube algorithm to show this to more people. It really does make a difference and subscribe to this channel for money, business, and personal finance videos. So those are the proposals that have been made to benefit the people struggling to make it through this. Like I said, love to hear your thoughts and I'll see you in the next video.